welcome back to my channel. My name is Danielle and I am the owner of Damn Fancy Creations and the Drunk Flamingo Glitter. In case you guys are new to my channel, I do want to let you know that you can catch my content in a few different places. I have a large tutorial group on Facebook. I have our fun glitter group and our Damn Fancy Tribe where I offer exclusive content, discount codes, group challenges, and all sorts of fun stuff each month. All of those groups are going to be linked in the description in case you guys want to check those out. Today's tutorial, we are going to be blinging a tumbler. This tumbler is going to be blinged out with my Summer Vibes Jelly Rhinestone Mix that is offered on thedrunkflamingo.com. Before I even um, ordered these stones, I just had a vision of what I wanted to do for a cup and ordered colors accordingly and I think it turned out awesome. Um, if you guys did not know, I started my whole business just blinging random items. I have done stuff from LED mirrors to shoes to teapots, coffee, um, coffee makers, um, all sorts of crazy stuff, car emblems. So doing this tumbler definitely took me back to my roots. I don't know why I decided to do it in a 30 ounce because I felt like I was never going to get finished with it. And I used pretty small stones. I used two, three, and four millimeter crystals, which is a lot smaller than I would normally use, but those were the sizes I had in these colors. So I just decided to go for it. Um, so I'm gonna walk you guys through kind of how I prep my cups um, when I do bling them, um, what adhesive I use, what pattern I use, how I bling around letters, how I bling around the rims, like the top and bottom rim of a cup so you guys get a straight line all the way around and all sorts of fun stuff. So um, I'm gonna go ahead and let this tutorial play and if you guys have any questions as you're watching, please just ask in the comments. I try to come back and answer as many questions as I can. So if you guys are ready to see how I blinged this tumbler, let's get started. All right guys, so first things first, we're going to prep our tumbler. This is just an old sublimation tumbler that I had um, that was just sitting in my pile. So I decided to just tape it off and bling it. I'm actually glad that I used a sublimation tumbler because the bottom of the tumbler was already white um, versus just stainless steel and I didn't have to epoxy it or paint it or anything. So I'm just taping right below where the sublimation image ends and then I'm going to go spray a couple times with Rust-Oleum two times just flat white paint. I like to use the flat option versus gloss because it does dry much quicker than the glossy or semi-gloss options. And I did go around it a couple times just to try to cover as much ink as I could. Um, in my mind, I was thinking it's all going to be covered with crystals anyway versus glitter. So even if some of the dark spots kind of showed through the paint, you wouldn't be able to see it underneath the crystals. So after this white has dried, we're going to spray it with fluorescent yellow and fluorescent pink. I do prefer the Kryolan fluorescent colors better than Rust-Oleum. I purchased the Rust-Oleum when I saw them at the store and I really did not care for them at all. And there's little Birdie for those of you that may hear her in my videos sometimes. <laughs> So I'm not really going for an ombre when I spray this. I'm just kind of spray painting it randomly around the tumbler because these are kind of the colors that are going to match my crystals that I'm going to be using. 
So I sprayed the yellow first, and then I'm going to go and spray the pink. And wherever the pink overlaps the yellow, it's going to um, create a pretty orange. So I always do test sprays just to make sure it's not globby or powdery. And I'm just gonna go in and at first spray all the spots that were white. And then I'm going to overlap some of those yellow spots. So then we're just going to be left with a pretty orange hot pink base, which will go well with our crystals. So once you're happy with the color, you're just going to set it aside, let it dry really well, and then you can add the decals if you want to add a name or quote or something like that to it. Okay, so clearly you can still see the text through the paint. Um, I don't know why it didn't cover very well. Um, the next sublimation tumbler that I spray painted, I actually did sand it really well. And that did help the image not show up as much. But since this cup was just for me, I wasn't really too concerned with it. Now, if you're going to be selling this to a customer, you definitely want to make sure that that text is covered up. I probably would have spray painted it again with white or added a layer of epoxy that was tinted with a white colorant. But again, since this was just for me, I was not super concerned if you could see the um, image <laughs> underneath the crystals. So I just took my alcohol and I just wiped the bottom, just cleaned off any of that spray paint residue that was on there. And then we're going to be ready to apply the decal. I just printed off my business name, which is Damn Fancy, which is also my initials for those of you that did not know. And the font I am using, I believe, is called With Heart. I got it from Creative Fabrica, and I will link that in the description in case you guys want to add that to your font library because we can never have too many, right? So I am just weeding my letters with these little tweezers. They come in super handy. And then I'm going to get my transfer tape, which I believe that this one was too small. So I did have to go cut a fresh sheet off of my roll, which my transfer tape that I use is also linked in the description. I have only purchased this roll one time because it's so large and because I use every piece until there's literally no tack left on it. So I just cut a thin little strip and I just line it up as best I can. And I did choose to layer my vinyl because I did want this name outlined with black crystals. So if I had that black outline already, then it was going to be easier for me to kind of plan my crystals a little bit better. And after I started blinging, I realized that I should have just applied my vinyl over the font and then I probably would not be able to see it as much as I can. And y'all can see, like, I was having such a hard time with this cup. <laughs> this transfer tape was pulling up my spray paint and everything. It was driving me nuts. This was definitely one of those times where I was trying to do too many steps at once and it backfired on me. So I um, just touched up that paint um, with my acrylic paint that I had. And 
And then you definitely want to make sure that your spray paint is dry before you epoxy. I was trying to get the decal on there a little bit quicker than I should, and I should have known better. But you definitely want to make sure that your spray paint is 100% dry. I always let it sit overnight or longer, depending on if it has one or multiple colors on it. So this cup sat, I don't know, for probably two or three days until I was able to epoxy it. So right now I'm just taping off my bottom with some electrical tape. And before I epoxy, I am going to go over the vinyl with Quick Coat. This is a product from CCDIY and I like to coat some of my decals with it. It just helps keep the decals in place. It's not going to lift. No epoxy is going to get underneath that. And I did just go ahead and coat my entire tumbler. And it really does not take a lot. Quick coat goes a long way. As you guys can see, I think I probably put less than five mils in my cup and it coated the whole thing. So once the quick coat is dry, we are going to mix up a little bit of epoxy. I am just going to do a thin layer over the tumbler so we have a pretty smooth surface to work with and apply our crystals. I believe I'm just mixing up five milliliters. So I am just pouring 2.5 mils of part A and then 2.5 mils of part B into my little medicine cup and then we're going to mix it up until it's well combined and I don't ever mix for a certain period of time I don't mix for five minutes or for seven minutes or whatever I just mix until I don't see any more striations in the mixture if it looks cloudy then chances are you still need to mix a little bit. If it looks pretty clear, then you should be good. I also scrape the sides, scrape the bottom, scrape off my popsicle stick. And once it is mixed well, I'm just gonna pour a little bit on my cup and just smooth it out. And I'm not even going to put this cup on my turner because it is such a thin layer that it's not going to drip off When I used to make epoxy glitter canes, this is what I did as well. I would just smooth it on and set them up and the epoxy stayed where it was supposed to. Now, obviously, if you would feel more comfortable with putting it on a turner, you can definitely do that. Or if you think you are a little bit heavy handed with it and it needs to go on the turner, then definitely put it on there. All right, so once your cup is cured we're going to start applying crystals i like these tools from crystal ninja either the crystal katana or the crystal kubaton it's basically like a waxy substance on the tip um, amazon does have some cheaper options that work just as well those are going to be linked in the description for you guys and I always use liquid fusion to adhere my crystals. I've used liquid fusion for probably 10 years um, from when I first started blinging my mirrors and tennis shoes. This was my go-to adhesive. It used to be sold in Hobby Lobby, but I don't know why they don't sell it anymore, but you can get it off Amazon. So I am just going to show you guys how I do certain sections. I'm not going to bling this entire tumbler because y'all would be here for days. So to start my outlines, 
I just apply a very thin line and if it's a little bit too thick, I just take one of my silicone tools and just kind of thin it out a little bit. You don't want it too thin. Um, I like to get it like probably a little bit thicker than a, most people would, but I like for it to be kind of tacky when I apply my crystals. And then I will basically just start placing my crystals where I want them. For the outline, it's pretty self-explanatory. I am just taking my crystals and outlining the text. And these stones that I'm using, um, I did just use all resin acrylic jelly stones for this versus glass. Um, just because I like these colors better. Glass is going to be more sparkly, but I wasn't necessarily going for a sparkly look. I just really like these color combos together. And I still think that jelly stones give off a pretty sparkle. Um, they're just a little bit different than glass stones. And these black ones um, are also a resin stone. These are two millimeters that I'm using right now. And all of these crystals that I'm using today can be found on thedrunkflamingo.com. So we are just going to pick up these crystals one at a time and stick them where you want them. And if you need to adjust the crystals, you can flip your little tool around and there's a metal end on it that is really helpful with kind of scooting crystals over a little bit. So I always do the outside of my letter first, just so it's outlined. I know for sure it's straight. It's not going to have any wonky edges. And then I will go back and fill in the interior of my letters. So I'm going to let this dry for just a second. And once those crystals are set, we can go back and do the interior of them. So again, I'm just squirting out some of this liquid fusion and then I'm kind of smoothing it down with one of my silicone tools. And now we're going to be using our white stones. I also have these on thedrunkflamingo.com. These are two and four millimeters, I believe. And I'm basically just going to fit them into place. And I do try to break them up. So I try to incorporate smaller stones and larger stones when I am crystal sticking. So it doesn't look like all of the larger stones are on one side of the letter and all of the smaller ones are on the other side. I just like to have a little mixture.
So once I get this letter finished, I will go and do all of the rest of the letters just like this, just filling in the interior with the white stones, just switching it up from the two millimeters to the four millimeters. And then we will be ready to do the colored stones. And here's a quick close-up so you guys can see how they kind of fit in there together. And here is what it looks like when the whole name is blinged. So now I'm going to use my Summer Vibes mix. I'm going to be using the four millimeter, the three millimeter, and the two millimeter. And the very first thing I do when I start to bling the tumbler body itself is to do the edge. You always wanna start with the edge, whether that's around the name, around the base of the tumbler, around the top of the tumbler, wherever you need that straight line, that is what you want to do first. Because that way it will ensure that you get a straight line and it's not going to be wonky. I will typically do my edges in the same size crystal, so I will probably do the edge in four millimeter all the way around the tumbler. And for this tumbler, I'm going to use the scatter method. That is pretty much my method of choice. I don't particularly care for the honeycomb method where they're basically the same size crystals all the way around stacked super evenly only because I don't, that would just stress me out too much. <laughs> like trying to get them in a super straight line all the way around the cup. I've done that a couple of times and I'm just not a huge fan. Um, so I prefer the scatter method. That way I can use multiple crystal sizes. I think that that gives it a little bit more interest as well. And you're not so stressed out about getting everything perfect. The scatter method is more forgiving. So now that I have my edges done, I am just going to fill in this little center spot. And we're just going to start sticking crystals wherever they fit. I try to work with the natural shape that the crystals kind of produce. Um, as you're sticking your stones, you will see how some larger crevices are created and then some smaller crevices are created. So I try to work with that to my advantage and obviously stick the larger stones well, where they will stick nicely and then stick the smaller stones in the smaller spaces. And I realized that I did not have any two millimeters out, so I had to grab some real quick. So I am just sticking them in there. And y'all can see I'm not even really thinking about it too much. I'm just grabbing stones and sticking them where they'll fit. And then I will also, y'all will see me kind of pushing on the crystals. I'm just kind of condensing them a little bit, just 
squishing them together so that there's not a whole lot of open space. So that is basically how I do my edges. So I'm going to go and bling all the way around the bottom and just bling a little further up. And then I will show you guys how I do a little bit more of the body. So here is a little bit more close up where y'all can see a little bit better how I place each stone individually. and just how I kind of fit them in. So I am just kind of fitting the stones where they will fit, I guess, according to their size and just kind of squeezing them in there. That glue was like a little bit too thick, so I just wiped some off a little bit. So now I'm going to bling a little bit more around the tumbler and I will show you guys how I bling around the name. So here's what I have so far. So I'm going to show you guys how I bling around the name where I start. So when I start my name, we're going to treat this as an edge. And I'm going to place my crystals right up against the name or quote, whatever you have on there um, first. We don't want to work from the middle of the tumbler to the name, because if you start in the middle of the tumbler and then get to the name, your crystals may not fit right up against the outline and it won't look as clean or straight. So we have our glue around our name. I am just going to go in with the two and three millimeter crystals and we're going to fill in any of these little crevices that we see first just to make sure that those are filled. And then we're going to go and place the crystals along the black outline. So it's basically like we're doing a second outline, but with different sized crystals. And I am using different sizes because I don't want this to look like it was outlined in the same size. We just want it to look like it's part of the tumbler, the body of the tumbler. So I'm just mixing my sizes, the two, three, and four millimeters, and we're just fitting in those crystals wherever they will go. Again, like y'all can see how quickly I'm working. Um, and I don't even, this is not even sped up yet. Um, this is just me just sticking the crystals, just picking them up, sticking them on there. I'm not really thinking about it too much, which is why I like this particular method better because I'm just 
picking them up and sticking. I'm not thinking about where they're gonna go, how they're going to fit. So you guys can see now that once I have the name kind of outlined, we're going to work our way away from the name. So I'm just going to apply a little bit more of my adhesive and we're just going to continue working Like I said, I feel like it took me forever to do this. I think in reality, it took me a couple hours over the course of three days. So I probably spent like maybe six hours. But again, I have been blinging stuff for over 10 years, which is crazy to think about. Um, so I've just learned like which ways work best for me how to get stuff done quickly. So you are basically just going to continue this all the way around your tumbler, blinging your name, blinging around the tumbler. And now I'm going to show you guys how to do this last part, which is basically how we're going to bling around the top part of the tumbler. And I think I forgot to mention, but after I epoxied, I did sand around the rim um, just so it had a clean edge at the very top. You guys can see it. Just a little bit of that stainless is exposed. And I just sand lightly. I did not break any seals, nothing like that. So I am just going to apply my adhesive. This is just my last little part that I have to do. And yes, I am just smoothing it out with my fingers. Just so it's even. I don't have globs anywhere. So we are going to start with the edge. Anytime you have a straight edge, you want to start with that first and then work your way away from that edge. So I'm just taking my four millimeter crystals and we're just going to outline this edge. My camera keeps coming in and out of focus. This was a super awkward angle. I'm so used to just holding items in my hand to bling them. Um, so working with the tumbler cradle was definitely interesting for me. And then I just kind of run my finger along that edge and just kind of even out any of those crystals if they need to be evened out. And now I'm just going to start crystal sticking and come from this top area all the way down to the bottom. And we're just going to do the same thing that we did before. Um, I am just speeding this up just a little bit, but you guys can still see how I am just kind of placing those crystals wherever they will go. And I just try to get them as tight as I can together so you're not seeing a whole lot of that underneath color. And I will point out not to do this when you're super tired because this is why I had to take breaks often. A lot of times I would do this at night and I know myself and if I start to get tired, I will just want to finish it. So I will start to use only the larger stones that I have. And if 
your whole tumbler is mixed stones and then you have one section that is mainly just four millimeters then it's not going to look like it goes with the rest of the tumbler so that's why I did stop often because I spent so much time on this and I wanted it to look the best that it could But yes, these were the smallest crystals I have used for a project this large. Um, typically, when I would do larger items like coffee makers or tea kettles, or I used to do like bling paintings, I would use the 5mm or SS20 crystals. So those were even larger than any of the stones that I have on this cup so using a lot of the two and three millimeter stones we're definitely trying it sometimes but I think it was worth it I am very happy with how this tumbler turned out and it was something that just kind of kept me busy at night and another pretty cup that I can add to my collection. And I do get asked all the time, you know, how do you wash cups like this? So I am going to show you guys how to wash it. Um, you know, since this is adhesive, it is a very strong adhesive. I've never had issues with it coming off on anything that I've used it for, but I do suggest washing in a warm or cool water because even though it's a very strong adhesive, hot water can loosen the adhesive and you could lose a few stones if you try to scrub really hard with hot water. It just isn't a good combination. So I was so excited when I was getting to this stage. It was like, oh, just a few more, just a few more stones to go. And I do want to mention also that once I got finished with a section, I would kind of turn it a little bit and feel the stones just to make sure none of them had shifted or jostled a little bit. Um, so I would just kind of make sure that all of them were pressed down really well before the adhesive dried and the stones were stuck forever. And we're done guys oh my gosh can you believe it so here's what it looks like when it's finished I think it turned out super pretty all right so here is how I wash it so this has obviously been sitting for a while it is completely dry and I'm just putting some Dawn dish soap on my little scrubby. And I'm just lightly sudsing up the tumbler. And you do want to wash it um, after you finish because the applicator that we use, the crystal sticker, whatever, it is a waxy tip. So you want to make sure that you get any of that residue off of there just to make sure your tumbler is as sparkly as it can be. So I am just scrubbing on there. 
And again, this is just cool water. And once you have everything soaped up and scrubbed, we are just going to wash it off. So I'm just going to rub all that soap off there, make sure everything is clean. And then I'm going to dry it off really quick. I just use my microfiber car towels. I get a huge pack at Costco every year. But yeah, that's basically it, guys. So once it's dry, it's all very pretty. Look how sparkly that is. Well, that's pretty much it for this tutorial. I hope y'all enjoyed this video and it may have answered some questions y'all had about blinging or adhesives, cut prep, things like that. Um, but if you guys have any questions, just let me know in the comments and I will get back to you on them. If y'all enjoyed this video or learned something new, please be sure to like, subscribe, and share. Don't forget to catch the next video coming up that was picked just for you. As always, if you're looking for more tips, tricks, or tutorials, be sure to check out my tutorial group on Facebook or my Damp Fancy Tribe. Both are linked in the description. Thanks for watching!